this entirely will go above e to the power minus. So this is a parametric assumption estimation. Why it is a parametric estimation here? Because we are assuming about the distribution. We have assumed it's an either normal or log normal. So if the distribution is not as per your assumption, then it will not give you a correct value. Okay. Now in part one, also you had this Kevin Dowd reading where it was measures of financial risk topic was covered. In that measures of financial risk, I would strongly recommend you to just go through it. We said that we have where as one risk measure. Another risk measure was expected loss. Expected loss or expected shortfall or conditional wear was one of the risk measure that was taken. However, please please note that one of the problem with wear is wear says about that okay so this is a distribution and you so say that okay this is the loss that you will have okay minimum loss at 5% probability but it does not say what is the average loss or what is the worst loss you can have. So it does not say about the worst, it does not say about the average, right? So what we have is we have an expected loss measure which tries to find out, okay, once this wear has been breached, once this wear level has been breached, how much loss you can have. So this is known as conditional wear because it says that expected loss will take only those losses which are greater than the value at risk. So this is why it is called as conditional wear. So what we do is we try to find out over this area the average value. Now the average value how do you find out? Okay, So there are various approaches. Okay, One of the approach is think about this as the distribution. Let's say this is the tail. Okay, So this we have tried to find out let's say 95% wear. Okay, We can also compute what is the loss you can have at 96% at 97% 98% and we can assume what is the loss that you can have at 99%. So what we have done is we have divided this region into let's see how many part. One part, this is a second part, third part, fourth part, fifth part. So we have divided this excess loss region into five slices. Okay. Now out of these five slices then what we need to compute is we need to compute 5 minus 1 vars. What are these wares? 1, 2, 1 wire, 2 wire, 3 wire, 4 wire. These are the 4 wares that we have computed. Okay. And what we do is we take the average of these 4 wares. Okay. So this will give you a sum estimate of expected loss. Expected loss beyond, what is expected loss? It is beyond this measure. A average of all these values. This is your average wear. Okay. Now this will not give you a very good measure because you have taken only four, uh, sorry, five slices. Okay. What you can do is you can increase the number of slices. Let's say from five slices you have made it ten slices. Okay. So what we are saying is you are doubling the number of slices. In that case you will require nine wear. Then let's say you take twenty slices you require 19 wear measure. So what happens is if you increase the number of slices your wear estimate, uh, sorry not wear estimate, okay, your expected loss estimate would be becoming more and more and what we say is it will become accurate. Okay, It will become accurate. However the complexity will be you have to compute more number of wares. Okay, So in the first case you have to uh, compute only four wares Next you will have to uh, compute 9, then you have to con compute let's say 19, then you have to compute 39. So the number of wear uh, that you have to do is more. And as you know that in each wear, okay, the number of calculations can be more. So assuming a portfolio having 5 stocks, okay, the correlation you will assume, the 5 times you will do the computation. So the wear will require more and more computation. However, your the best is when the number of slices becomes infinite, if the number of slices becomes infinite, your expected loss from this measure will be exactly 100% correct. Okay. However, what will happen is, so this is what we are trying to get is, we are trying to get into the continuous form. Okay. However, these are all your discrete measures. 
you will compute all of this and you will find out so what we are doing is we will compute the summation of 1 by n where n n minus 1 where n minus 1 is the number of slices and each of this var that you will compute if you go for the more numbers if you n gets to infinity then this will be replaced with the integral okay so this this is what will happen okay but we need to not just know about this discrete measure and that too when n is very small numbers okay let us see then so what we are saying is calculate the expected shortfall so we are saying that calculation of the expected shortfall given the profit or loss or the return data please note that in the uh, book you will find that before the starting they have got into how do you compute the arithmetic return geometric return that i am not referring i assume that you already know it but just go through the book and you can see how these returns are computed so it is prob so expected loss is probability weighted average of the tail loss known as a conditional var it is the average of the tail var okay so break into n slices find out the var of n minus 1 and then take the average okay right so this is how do you compute the expected loss now what happens is your var measure and expected loss measure if you remember your part 1 we said that these are not coherent risk measure okay so coherent risk measure what there were some four properties of the coherent risk measure one of the property of the coherent risk measure was it it is sub additive in nature okay then monotonicity okay positive homogeneity and translation invariance these were the four properties of coherent risk measure please note that var is not a coherent risk measure and same ditto with expected loss both are not coherent risk measure a worst case loss is a coherent risk measure so just revisit what is a sub additivity principle the sub additivity principle says that if you combine two portfolios okay the risk of the combined portfolio will be less than or equal to the risk of each individual one okay that is the sub additivity principle and in your measures of financial risk you found that that sub additivity principle is broken because you can have a, a you can have a structure okay, you can have a portfolio where if you combine the var of the combined portfolio was coming as more than the individual items okay however please note that this coherent risk measure where is a coherent risk measure just revisiting your part 2 part 1 syllabus where is a coherent risk measure when the distribution is assumed to be normal okay the return distribution is assumed to be normal then where is coherent however where is not coherent when the return distribution is not normal because it violates the sub additivity principle okay so just uh, giving you that idea sub additivity principle is risk of a plus b is less than equal to risk of a plus b okay please note that if you understand that a portfolio which is composed of two stock okay, a and b having standard deviation of a and standard deviation of b having correlation of rho let's say put as r as a correlation you know that the standard deviation of the portfolio will be given as w1 sigma a square plus w b square sigma b square plus 2 rho w a w b sigma a sigma b you know that because this rho or instead of this rho i will take this as r you know that this r is less than or equal to 1 you can say that sigma of the portfolio will be less than equal to sigma of a plus sigma of b since var is equal to minus z sigma assuming we'll take the return as 0 assume the return is 0 so var is minus z sigma if i multiply with minus z both the side okay it will become var of portfolio is less than equal to var of a plus var of b okay so you can say that this var is actually adhering to this sub additivity but please note that this formula is only applicable for normal distribution okay if the returns are normally distributed then only you can apply right otherwise you cannot apply this okay right so that is the problem so these are assumed to be normal distribution 
and then it is a it is adhering to sub additivity in reality the var does not adhere to sub additivity i will send you my part 1 video okay part 1 video wherein it was saying that it breaks the sub additivity i will send but what you can see is you can see it in wikipedia also that example this so coherent risk measure if you see the wikipedia example they have taken a bond and yes you i will show you this example first you try to understand this example okay and then uh, say that whether it uh, gives you the uh, okay i don't think that okay brother okay here it is not given yeah yeah this is the example this is example given so that it says that the var is non coherent just go through this example okay now expected shortfall okay sorry expected shortfall is a coherent uh, risk measure okay so what are the other properties of the coherent risk measures monotonicity what is monotonicity what they are saying is expected value of y is more than expected value of x then risk of y is more than x so suppose let's say you have two portfolio okay so you have two portfolio okay y and x let's say expected value of y is greater than expected value of x so let's say this is the expected value of y and let's say this is the expected value of x and this is your ground zero okay so what we are they are saying is the risk of y is more than risk of x please note that here when they are saying about the risk if you see that the chances that it will decrease here is given more as compared so this is what you have to interpret as the loss that you can suffer okay that is what they are saying so expected value of y is more than risk of y is more than x okay then positive homogeneity if you see if you double your portfolio value the risk will also get doubled so what they are saying is rho of x okay e into c is equal to c times rho of x wherein you are this c is some con constant value which you are multiplying to the portfolio value so this is what is your positive homogeneity translation variance invariance translation invariance says that if you add cash to the portfolio the risk of the portfolio is decreased by this is your cash amount okay why it is saying suppose you have this is rho x okay and you are adding cash amount to this okay so this is your x plus the cash value now what happens is this portfolio is because this cash is not risky this cash is not risky what happens is this portfolio it can sustain a loss okay of a cash c, c amount also before decreasing in value so always we have to see about the decrease in value okay so this will decrease this is zero level so with this only amount it will decrease in value however this will decrease in value when you have this as the decline okay so that is why it is called as your translation invariance just go through this is again uh, your doubt book was only followed for this measures of financial risk okay now let us see what are the coherent risk measure we have seen that the coherent risk measure that expected loss i took the example that in case of expected loss what you can do is you have to do the summation okay but uh, but if you have more and more numbers then you have integration okay so it is a weighted average of the quantiles that is the distribution to the left so typically what you have is when you are doing a when you are measuring some coherent risk measure you have this as a weighted function okay so weighting function so this is some function which is a weighting function we don't have to worry about this weighting function okay because please note that the aim statement it is just asking us to describe they are not asking us to compute okay so we are interested only in describing about the method so what we have is we have one met one function which is a weighting function okay one example of weighting function is given over here this is the weighting function that is used in the book okay so what you have is it is saying that e to the power minus 